Marhaba friends, macOS Ventura running as a virtual machine VM on Windows using QEMU hardware accelerated with KVM and the missing piece is Windows subsystem for Linux WSL2. So yes, let's get started. Now to make this work on Windows, you obviously need the Dhiru Kolia script and you need a Windows subsystem for Linux Linux distribution. Of your choice, I have chosen Arch. You can use Ubuntu or whatever you like. All right, so I'm running the latest Microsoft kernel and I'll show you with this command. You see 5.15.74.2, which is the latest as the time of this video. And if I fire up Arch, then you can see that I have a decade old CPU and I have almost, wow, this is taking some time. Okay, sensors, and I have almost uh, 4 GB of RAM. I don't know if we can increase RAM in WSL2. If somebody knows about it, please write down in the comments below. Okay, to start up, we are going to check whether the WSL distribution supports kernel virtual machines through this command. And you see my does, and you should have this too. It is very important. Otherwise, it is not going to work what I'm show you, going to show you from here now on. All right, so now we are going to go back to the script. Oh, sorry, I would like to keep things separate. So I'm going to make a directory called Kimu, and I don't have anything other than two scripts and a Kimu directory. So I'm going to cd into Kimu directory, and I'm going to make all my code here. Okay, not make, but should display all my code here. So the Colia script now supports Ventura, and if we come down, we obviously have a Linux distribution and we have QEMU. I forgot to show you the QEMU version I'm running. It's the latest version. So, so first up, we are going to paste this command, which says we are going to make this tweak for the virtual machine to run. And yes, you should get one, otherwise it's a problem. Now, let's go back to this command. It says to make this change permanent, you may use the following command, but that's on the later stage. And then you should install QMU. I already have QMU. I do not have this command, which is this, okay, this package, which is DMG to IMG. So I'm going to install it. You can install it through the, if you're on Ubuntu, you can install it on our different distro. I don't know what to say, okay. <laughs> All right, next up, coming down, we will see that, we, I'm gonna clear the screen and then we will have to add the KVM, <clears throat> we have to add our user to the KVM, Libert and to the input group. So I'm gonna copy and paste these commands one by one and these commands should not throw any error. Since we are logged in as a super user, we are issuing sudo and the password it's not asking, that means we are logged in as a super user. So let me copy and paste all these commands one by one. And let's see, hopefully it goes through, yes. And it says note re-login after executing this command. So I'm going to re-login by hitting log out and then I'm going to fire up Arch once more from the drop down menu here on Windows Terminal. And since I'm a little finicky, I think this might or might not work. So I'm going to close this from here and I'm going to stop Windows subsystem for Linux altogether, saying WSLE.E shutdown. And then I'm going to fire up my Arch again. All right, now I have logged in and hopefully that logout and login is done. Okay, now I'm going to change into the scheme directory where I was and I check I do not have anything because I need to clone this repository, the repository that Hero Kolia provides. So let's paste and all the paste is going through control V guys. So it's not the arch terminal control shift V, it's just the windows terminal. So control V works, okay. So now this is cloned. We are going to CD into that directory and we are going to check for updates. Okay, so how do we check for updates? We will pull these updates through saying git pull dash dash rebase and if there are any updates then we will have some download but we are already up to date all right now remember we need to make this change permanent right then after this is only for intel boxes not for amd so it is going to copy the kv configuration from this directory to the machines kv configuration okay so now we have to issue the password and we are done okay golden guys till here we are good to go okay so now let's go down again and now we are going to fetch the macOS installer through running the by running the script so again control v 
and hit enter and the options that are being presented to us is all these three options all these six options and we are going to choose six because i'm going to show you ventura uh, and i have already demonstrated mantra i guess Pixar. i don't know okay so now download is complete now we need to again go back to the script and we will have to convert the dmg file the recovery image into an img image so by issuing this command dmg to img and that is why we required the dmg to img package to be installed again guys uh, in a previous video i had just renamed this dmg to img and it worked i don't know it might or might not work here but just to be on the safe side dmg to img looks good we're done all right now next up we are going to create a virtual hard disk image where the mac os will be installed so i'm going to copy this command and paste it but i'm just going to change the size so i can distinguish it from the other things that we have so i'm going to make it 1000 gigs and don't worry it won't take up all the space it will just take up space that as required all right so we have the cli method we have just need to run open cone boot.sh script but we have to modify the script we always have okay <laughs> we always have to so i need your full attention guys please keep your eyes wide open and don't think anything as other than this and so come down and we see the allocated RAM is four gigs, which is fine. That's why I'm thinking we should have more RAM in WSL. I don't know if that's possible. Now, CPU, this is very important. Go to your task manager and on the performance tab, if we, hit, if we switch over to the performance tab, you see there it says one socket, two cores, four logical processor. That means I have two cores and in which two threads are running. So I have four logical processors. So I should be giving one, two, two, not one, two, four. This will be different depending upon your configuration. So I have one socket, two cores, and although it has four logical processors, how do I get four? Because multiplying two by two. So I have to say two threads per core. That means four threads in total. So if we come down, we have to change the SMP there. So if we go, no, now we have to go back up and we say SMP is four. That means we are giving four logical processors and we'll just say threads is equal to CPU threads. All right, because threads is two. So two into two into one is four. All right, hopefully makes sense. Okay, now let's come down and yes, we need to change this thing again here. OVIA MF VARS 1024768. Just change this to OVMS VARS. Okay, we don't need that. Okay, and coming down again, I think, um, do we need to change anything more? Okay, we can definitely comment out uh, the monitor. We don't need the monitor to use for some advanced situation. And you can use VGA and the VGA memory is 128. You can bump this up to 256. I believe you can even bump this up to 512. That's like the max, but I don't want to go with VGA guys. I don't recommend it for at least for Mac OS. So I'm going to comment this out. And in place of VGA, the, 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 uh, the, the device that I'm going to use is VGA and the type is going to be Vert.io, which is like the maximum, the best graphics that Kimio can provide you. So looks good, guys. We hit with, with control save and we're done. And I think this is the time where we need to start up. So I'm going to close my Firefox and hopefully things will work. Yes, let's see. Open dot slash open core boot dot sh. Enter. Mm, yes, and there are some warnings that my CPU is not supporting some features that is required in the script. And yes, we have it, which we are in business, guys. Yeah, what do you say, guys? Lift off. We have a lift off. Okay, so now go to the macOS installer on the right, not the first one. The first one is EFI. I'm going to maximize this. And so it says macOS base system, where the base system is the one we downloaded. And after some gibberish, we will be presenting the we will be presented with the screen and first off we have to format the disk so coming here choose the disk that you have created the 1 tb disk remember the the disk which we created was the large disk and i'm going to name it mac hdd very imaginatively and format you can go with apfs but i would like to go with mac os extended why because i have a very slow hard disk so if you have MEA, NVMe, I think you can go. I mean, if you write, write down your experience in the comments, how if you chose APFS and how did it went, go? Okay. 
So now it is formatting the disk to macOS extended journal. You can use APFS as I said. Now let's get out of here and hit the next button for us to install. So go back there up and reinstall macOS Ventura and click on continue. Now on this next screen, we will be presented with, so click on continue again, and it is going to check the installation information. And for some reason, it could not wrote the, the ULA, but we are just going to say agree and agree on this screen. And it will hopefully, okay, we have to choose the disk where we want to install it. This is the only disk that we have. So let's choose on continue. And yes, guys, we are golden. We are good to go. Okay, word of caution. If you do this on Linux, it took me around six to eight hours. On Windows with WSL, I don't know, it probably will take like 12 hours or something like that. And it will have three reboots. So each time you reboot, you have to go to the installer. On the third reboot, you will have to go to the uh, to the HDD and it will uh, install. So I'm going to cut short everything and I'm going to take you to the screen where I'm in running macOS Ventura on Windows because sorry guys, I couldn't record it. I didn't want to make this video again like 25, 30 minutes. So again, I you see my name there, Hikmati Ustad and I will log in and we will see that obviously, I mean, you can see guys that performance is definitely a cause for concern, but it's just my system because I have a decade old machine, a CPU, and I have four, just four gigs of RAM in this WSL, which I think we can improve. But it is going to vary for you. If you have a BP machine, things are going to be better for you. My word of advice is if you want to run macOS Ventura as a VM, go to Arch, install QMU, use my guide and install there. I just wanted to show uh, a way for you to run it on uh, Windows. And so here it is. One of my viewers on the Linux video wanted uh, some guidance. So this is guidance for him and for all of you guys. Hopefully you will have a better experience than I have. And yes, yes, remember guys, this is nested virtualization. So hope I hope what you like what you saw. Thank you guys so much guys. Take care. Bye bye.